Villains. Love them or hate them, or love to hate them. They make stories good. But some villains, they chicken out on us. They mellow their villainy with things like reasonable motivations and sympathetic backstories. So today we're here to pay tribute to those that don't compromise their principles with petty things like sanity. So join us as we examine the top 10 crazy villains list. I'm not sure how strong he is. He's stronger than you? Yes. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Using the power of science, a man frees his inner dark side to let it loose to cause chaos and discord. Naturally, this leads to the inner dark side taking over and destroying him. Nowadays, it's usually played for comedy, but the actual idea is disturbing and mad. A split in personality? Unpredictable switching between the two? Rape and murder? Yeah, that's crazy villain material, isn't it? Only if we're buying discount. What? The part that everyone overlooks here is that Dr. Jekyll, the good side, did this. The most honest and decent man to ever let evil walk through the streets, Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll, at your service. And when everyone's super, no one will be. Alright, think of an idol from your childhood. Michael Jordan. Okay. Imagine you tried to play basketball with him one day, and he kicked the ball away from you and told you to go home. Okay. Well, what would you do? Well, naturally, I'd dedicate myself to building basketball playing monsters, which I'd test on retired basketball players. Through their hideously painful deaths, I'd perfect my creations until they could destroy any opposition. Thus, only my superior technology could stop them, and I'd be hailed as the greatest basketball player of all time. I call it Space Jam. <laughs> you sick bastard! I am your number one fan! Replace basketball with superhero, and you have Syndrome. Slighted by his childhood icon, Mr. Incredible, he dedicated himself to becoming the greatest hero ever, by building a threat so strong only he himself could stop it. And when that failed, he kidnapped Mr. Incredible's son to raise as his own. At Syndrome, a man is so determined to be a hero that he'll resort to kidnapping, torture, and child murder. A logical leap only possible for the crazy. Or the illiterate. Oh, this is just too good. Shut up, we both know you're crazy. I want to play a game. <laughs> okay, what can I say about Jigsaw? Well, not much, considering I haven't actually seen the movies. Well, not much of them. But I do have this handy psychological profile. So, let's see, what do we have here? Okay, wants to make the world a better place and to convince people that life is worth living. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. And this appears to be a bank account containing oodles of money to be used to that effect when he dies. Are we sure this guy's a candidate for this list? Let me see. Hmm. Ah, okay, here we go. A list of expenses. Handcuffs and restraints. Kinky. Buzz saws, toxic gases, and electrodes. Okay, he's in. Next. For those of you that think he should be higher, we agree. Except... He's only crazy in one real specific way. Jigsaw thinks that the ends of making people live life more justifies the means of using industrial power tools the way the label warns you not to. It's a crazy view, clearly, but not so crazy that we can't see where he's coming from. Now, for those of you who don't think he should be on the list at all, get help! Game over! Now, I've been
been told by people in the know that it's important to tend to your fan base. Not only are they your livelihood, but they can really help you out of a bind. I mean, let's say you were stranded in the wilderness. Wouldn't you want a helpful fan to rescue you, nurse you back to health, and break both your ankles when you- Whoa, that just took a dark turn I wasn't expecting. Yeah, Annie Wilkes is scary. Her violent fits of temper and inability to swear show us a woman who is barely holding on to the appearance of sanity. And it is only the appearance, given she's killed before and is planning on killing again. She's like a serial killer version of Ned Flanders. I'll never watch that show the same way again. Anyway, showing us why obsessed fans are so creepy. And all you had to put up with was one really annoying fan. Let's get the hell out of here. I do so hope we're gonna be friends. Mr. Tea Time. It's pronounced Teatarme, sir. This guy is a hardened killer who will inhume anyone for the right price. Of course, in Ankhmore Port, the Assassin's Guild is a pillar of the community, so that doesn't mean much. It is a high-class society that has careful rules and regulations about how people are to be killed. And tea time! No, I did say tea a me Follows them to the letter. I checked Sir George's breathing with a mirror as instructive. Apparently his head was several feet from his body at that point. That was all right, wasn't it, sir? Yeah, something's not right with this guy. He's educated, meticulous, well-dressed. You nailed Sir George's dog to the ceiling. I couldn't have it barking while I was working, sir. And batshit crazy. Taya Taime is the guy who doesn't understand degrees. Where if someone else might throw a punch, he'll slaughter an entire family. And then be hurt when everyone else objects. I think I know you, Tea Time. You're the mad kid they're all scared of, right? The kid who didn't know the difference between chucking a stone at a cat and setting it on fire. Exactly. I think what cements his position on the list for me is this. During the story, someone asks him to kill Christmas, or the Discworld equivalent thereof, and he already has a plan worked out. And it almost worked! I mean, think about that. Before anyone asked him to, he developed a viable plan to kill Christmas, just to see if he could. Oh yeah, he's on the list. Now let's see how creepy. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. You kids and your crazy AIs! In my day, we'd settle for the regular crazy villains, and we'd be grateful for them! Okay. In general, we've avoided using non-human intelligences. They think too differently to judge by the same standards. But really, if you're being plagued by a maladjusted sociopathic overlord with an obsession for baked goods, and desire to alternatively kill you and experiment on you, you really gonna care if it passes the Turing test? Certainly not. And I resent the implication that I'm a one-dimensional, bread-obsessed electrical appliance. What makes GLaDOS so compelling and so interesting is that she is both alien and human. She has real desires and emotions, or at least possible facsimiles of them, and yet she can't even comprehend the idea of other people having them as well. So she'll lie to you, insult you, and try to kill you and then get increasingly frustrated when you don't play along. The results are both chilling and hilarious. It was a morality core they installed after I flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin to make me stop flooding the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin. Plus, she has an entire processor core devoted to cake, and that's just awesome. GLaDOS, more sociopathic than humanly possible. And our number five. The difference between us is that I can feel pain.